I would like to call upon Alexander's higher self, please. Yes, we are here. Thank you so much. Are we able to do a body scan and see what's happening for his body? Yeah. He's been pushing it a bit lately physically. Uh, it's pretty healthy. We have been continuously been detoxing him since the last time we were here. Thank you. He's, that's why he's been urinating so much. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Great for him to have that proof. Can you tell me about his back and the shape of his back and what you're doing to help him with that? Yes. Um, because of the nature of the back and the, it's, as it's a structural part of his body and the interconnected muscles and organs and the like plus any toxicity that's built up in around the spine we have to do it slowly we can't just snap our fingers and it's straight um, so what we are doing is gradually working on that for him and that's part of the ongoing detoxing um, <laughs> Thank Lately, his, he has noticed his back has been a lot better, but there's going to be moments where you know, there's going to be some something that doesn't feel quite right because everything's shifting into a new position and all of the muscles um, have to change as well to suit the back. As one side of his back, the muscles are stretched and the other side, they aren't. It's a big process to uh, do this without causing too much pain. Mm, I understand. Uh, would it be beneficial for him to, for you to remove the conscious sensations of the pain uh, associated with the back shape? Would that assist? Uh, the thing is, if we remove that, then he'll be doing too much physical stuff and we want him to be doing metaphysical work. <laughs> I can see your point. Great thinking. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate that. Are you able to still uh, keep healing and balancing his body throughout the session as I ask questions? Absolutely. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. We we're very curious. We have heard information about methane gas and a connection to some Bible references and the burning of flesh. What can you tell us for us to understand this, please? Well, this methane gas that is in the atmosphere, it doesn't seem to be a problem um, as the gas is mixed around with oxygen and it kind of gets dissipated and uh, what's the word um, it gets watered down as such um, and we don't see it a problem but it, it could be something that could be a problem in the future after the first shift um, oh, okay. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, a probability that it, it could eventuate, but as some things aren't set in stone, it, it has the opportunity to happen or not. Thank you. I understand. Um, and it seems like many parts of religious texts do refer to what we um, understand as being the shift and the difference between new earth and old earth. Is there anything else you'd like us to know about that? 
Well, the thing with these religious, organized religious, um, basically corporations and things that are out there, they are, they are the water is muddied with them because the humans had got in there and muddled with everything and changed things around. And there's some truth in them. And the, the whole thing with the, you know, the religious stuff is you take it with a grain of salt and it's been kind of reorganized to be more fear mongering than anything as you'll notice with any religious information it's a lot of scare tactics in there to control the population indeed okay i thank you very much um we were curious to know how Guy is going at the moment with your consciousness being here in the 3D. What would you like us to know? Guy just wants you to know that she's holding on as long as she can, but she's tired and she's, it's like she's holding on to the edge of a brick wall or holding on to something and her fingers are slipping. She is ready to let go. She's had enough. She's tired. And she needs to just let go. Okay. Thank you so much. And as humanity as a whole, how is humanity going with this awakening uh, experience? Yeah. All of these lockdowns have been really helpful for people to take the time out of their busy day and actually become aware of themselves and that there's more than just material 3D life. So they're beginning to um, have the seeds planted for their inner work and but most, most importantly, becoming aware, self-aware. And humanity is moving forward um, at higher rates than ever before. Fantastic. Great to know. Thank you so much. Um, I was also curious um, about uh, starseed lineage. Um, could someone say from a reptilian Darcy, when they reincarnate, um, do they have options to have different Darcy collective um, connections? Or um, I'm trying to understand um, how that works, those extensions of self. Um, do you have free will when you reincarnate to be connected to different star seed collectives? It all depends on the involvement of the spiritual being itself. Because a reptilian as such is not the reptilian body. They still are a soul and they have as much right as anyone to experience any other star seed or life in any other planet, providing that they have done enough work in spiritual evolution on their soul and to be granted to certain areas. Not anyone can just go anywhere and do anything, but they can work towards uh, certain areas and star seeds and growing with different groups and learning from each other. I really, really appreciate knowing that. Thank you. It makes so much sense. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so for any of the reptilians that are on this planet now, 
um, I guess it's such a broad question, so I'm sorry about this. Um, are they able to reincarnate into a fifth planet? It depends on that individual reptilian. Yeah. what they're doing, what their growth has been, their karma and all of that such stuff there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, makes total sense. So uh, can the reptilian soul uh, reside at all dimensions then? Can it reside in any dimension, do you say? Can it? Can they? Do they have flexibility to res to reside um, in all dimensions, or is there a limit of dimensions they can reside in? There's. It's limited because they're still a, a material being, even though they can. Some of them can shape shift and do uh, different things with their technology and their body but they have the opportunity like anyone else to move up through the dimensions through the evolution of their soul um, a lot of them are down lower on the lower dimensions um, and they but even though they have technology that can do these is what a human might think has been magical um, feats of things like shape shifting, teleportation, and the like. Uh, but they are, like anyone, can move up if they wish to. I see. So it will come. We will as well. Uh -huh. Right. So it's attaining enlightenment at all levels. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I really appreciate that. Um, we were curious, uh, Alexander and I were curious to hear about the weapons in space from, uh, now I can't even recall the person here, he'd heard it from, uh, being the false uh, ET evasion, and this would be the last card. Can you tell us from your perspective all about that and what's going to be happening? Yeah, so one of Von Braun in the 70s uh, tried to warn humanity of the cabal and their plans. Uh, he worked in NASA and the space programs, and he knew um, he was involved with them all, and he knew what their plans were for right from um, the 20s or earlier when they started um, these mass programs. Um, and he said the last card was a face, a false alien invasion, where they will use technology, satellites and stuff. And I believe they will be using some of, um, some of the satellites that um, uh, lost the word, the Tesla satellites to the technology and those to use it, a false invasion effect. Um, and they're going to try and scare everyone into believing that the extraterrestrials are maleficent and they're evil and they're trying to attack us. And it'll be a mixture of technology and weapons um, to try and pull the wool over our eyes. But everyone is waking up and some people won't be fooled um, and then they want to be able to scare us into accepting mass weapons in space and satellites, which they will more so use on us, but they, they will also use them on 
the extraterrestrials who are here trying to help us. They already do have this technology. They've been rolling it out, ready for it. Um, they have already used this technology on ETs and there are even a few uh, videos of beams being shot at crafts in the atmosphere and space around Earth. Okay, and so will we experience uh, this illusion of the evasion? It's pretty close to the shift. So it, if we do see it, it'll be a sign that the shift is a, about to happen. Um, is that because it produced too much fear for the collective? Um, it's it's actually the cabal who are mostly in fear at the moment. Their fear is tremendous and they are frantically running around trying to do whatever they can um, while they're getting wiped out one by one. They are trying to put things in place to put us in more fear because they think that if that happens, then it will slow the shift down and it will slow evolution of humans down. Mm. Um, it seems that when people start hearing about information about the new earth, they go into such panic that they, uh, they go into fear themselves. Um, is this just a case because they can't understand the full situation so they get confused and anything that we're confused about produces fear? Anyone that reacts to the new earth and the shift is because they are still intertwined in 3D life and they are terrified of dying and losing everything that they have worked for and what they own and they are not ready to let go. It, it disrupts their programming and but hearing about it is important because it plants the seed for them to begin thinking about it and learning about it and so many people will react with a trigger but it actually triggers them into a shift in their own consciousness. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, we're able to uh, send out profound love and healing to all that need love and healing. Mm -hmm. We understand that so many people are struggling with the higher vibrations and a bit confused why. Yes, we send them love and healing. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, we also wanted to hear from Krishna, please. We would love to be able to um, understand uh, his message for humanity and um, what information he wants to share about himself with us. Yes, I am here. Thank you very much. Um, welcome. Um, I haven't directly spoken to you before, and I really appreciate this opportunity. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, what would you like us to know about you as we are very curious? Yes, I am a ancient being, and I am confused in literature of being the supreme personality of Godhead. That which I 
am making clear that I am not. I am just a being like anyone else. Well, I've been around for eons and eons. I have created worlds and planets and universes of my own, but I am surely not the creator of all. But I try to send messages out to all that will help and create more peace and balance in the world and give them a way of life that will help balance one out and show them the right foods and things to eat. Um, in the past, though, things change and sometimes things that I say to eat get compromised. Like I have said to drink in the past, to drink milk from the cow is to find protein fibers help rebuild brain damage and things from the foods that we have eaten. But now milk is compromised because of the factories and what they're doing, homologizing, pasteurizing these things. It is killing all of the nutrients and proteins in the milk. And then these corporations go and put scientifically manufactured man-made proteins and vitamins and minerals back into it and call it vitamins and minerals when it is just poison. So this milk is compromised. If you can get milk straight from the cow, that is fine to drink. But bear in mind that you are getting the milk from a cow that has not used hormones or glycol or any sprays on the ground. Otherwise, you'll just be poisoning yourself further and the poor animals. Our job is to protect the animals. They're not our food source. This is greatly, greatly saddening for me to see. Mm. Was there a time where animals had life contracts where they respected um, that their bodies would be used um, in a food chain? There has been, but the contracts are mostly for animals to animal contracts. If an animal can be used in sacrifice for one's own life if they're at the point where they need to live in a life or death situation. But basically these animals are there just to live their own lives and amongst each other. The killing is for each animal between animal. There have been time periods where, of course, where they have been contracted to um, be killed between humans and other life forces or for other purposes, um, mainly not only food, but, and some of the animals that are killed in this day and age now that you are living in are actually contracted to be killed as well just because of the times that you're in um, like anyone is here they are here for a purpose and they're living here and their contract doesn't doesn't uh, sometimes mean that every animal that is killed is under contract though. And if that animal is killed early before its contract, then it has to reincarnate back into that same animal system and go back over its life again if it's been prematurely ended it, 
the ending of life was. Mm. So for how to sign into a contract now, uh, knowing that it would be used for uh, producing the flesh to be consumed, would those mostly be agreed upon as exit points or is there still, um, I guess it's an individual situation. I'm sorry, I'm just thinking about my real question I wanted to ask was, they have spiritual teams to protect them and help them uh, live as long as they are contracted to? Yes, they, they do have a spiritual team to help them. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, sorry, we, I did get sidetracked with the food conversation, but it is a very marvelous one. I really appreciate all perspectives there. Um, and so Krishna, is there any other information you would like us to know about you personally, uh, so we can feel like we understand you more versus the, the, uh, the belief systems of you? Oh. I could go on for days about this, but the main thing now is concentrating on the shift and our energies and not worrying about any religions or distractions. If you need a religion to help you stay in a system to be a better person or to keep out of trouble, then that is where you are and that is what it's for, that is its purpose. Apart from that, there's no need to worry about the religion as such and getting it caught up in the drama of that. You just need to worry about doing your inner work, helping yourself is helping others. If you work on yourself, then you're in a place to help others. If you don't love yourself, how can you love another? Profound. I really appreciate that. Um, it seems that Alexander has had a connection with you um, and profoundly respects you, what do you have to say to him personally today? Yes, he was drawn to me as the organization, the movement of the Hare Krishnas as he was asking for help and better association. And I've always been there in many lifetimes for Alexander, and we have even had lifetimes together. Um, so I'm always there to help him and guide him. It is lovely. Is he re managing to recognize your frequency um, as you are connected to him now? Yes, yes. Fantastic. I love that. Okay, thank you so much for your wisdom and uh, inspiration. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if there is, is there anything else you want to share with us before you go? Just do your inner work. Everyone needs to do their inner work and have time where they can meditate and quiet their mind so then they can connect to their guides, to their angels, connect to their higher self and receive that energy and the downloads and the help they require. If they have any problems in their life, if they're worried or concerned about anything, all they need to do is tell them their worries. It can be through verbally spoken or through the mind. 
and you can just say, this is my problem, I give it to you now, and we will do the work. This is our job, this is what we're here for. You give us the problem, and we will sort it out, and all you have to do is just act on what we bring to you to do the work on. When you are presented with something, then you need to just do the work. You don't have to go out and try and look for what to do, how to change the problem. Fantastic. Thank you for the reminder. I really appreciate that. So we ask you to receive with much love and gratitude for the information you've provided us today. And I'd like to connect back in, please, with Alexander's higher self um, as we have some more questions. Yes, we have that. Thank you. Um, he was very curious to uh, understand what happened to him when he was around the age of six to eight, when something grabbed his foot. What can you tell us? Yes, this was a night where we were visiting and we had just returned him and his, as we would take him on board the ships, we would sedate him and put him in a trance. Um, but something happened and he awoke just moments too soon. And he got a weird sensation in his body and it startled him. and. He could feel something in his foot. Um, although we're not physical beings, he could feel the energy from us. Mm. And that's what he could feel. And it, he woke up so quickly, feeling this energy that it startled him greatly. I've heard from other clients that they're subconscious has been removed from sorry the conscious mind has been has removed that memory because it impacts them so much for some people um and you chose to leave that memory there for him now, what is the significance of yes. that we were just about to say that we left that part there because we want him to throughout his life to be curious of what's out there and non-physical stuff. We have given him several experiences through his life to make him aware of this reality and to have almost a tangible evidence of it so that he truly does believe it firsthand and is not doubting it so he can actually do his work with full faith. Completely understandable. Thank you so much. Can we go back through time and send love and uh, support uh, for that younger version of Alexander who did feel quite terrified for quite some time? Um, we just want to comfort that inner child of Alexander uh, after that experience now that we have all put it into place and have learned from it? Yes, we can do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, so he is wanting to know about um, his induction experiences then now that you've just uh, confirmed that to us. What would you like us to know? Well, he has been a part of this for his whole life um, and other lifetimes is his from a lineage of being a part of multiple star seeds and areas of the universe. Um, 
the experiences that he has had, the magnitude of experiences is that this is just one that he is, where he is at with this lifetime and experiencing these things. And we would take him on board to upgrade him and work on him. And he would be there helping us as well, not only getting upgrades, but he would be doing work with us on board and helping humanity prepare for the coming days. I see. And so um, in the past, we know that it is contractual, these abductions. Um, what would you like him to know what happened to him when he was um, taken back onto craft? Yes, well, we don't call them abductions because he was, he was never taken without consent. And like most people aren't, there's their contracts. But through people seeing movies and the powers that be like to put things out there to make things, people think that these things are scary and not natural, et cetera, et cetera. So he, is, he even has dreams some nights when he's on ships and even being in some fights between other races. Um, and these are not dreams. These are him out of body working with us during the night. So quite often he is out helping out of body. Fascinating. And um, out of curiosity, what star seed system would he be connected to in this lifetime? Uh, at this point, we do not wish to disclose. That's fine. That's fine. And so instead of abductions, you'd like us to refer to them as approvals. And, <laughs> um, and I think um, I would like to offer profound healing to all of those people who are still traumatized or scared from having the experiences of abductions, understanding that this is uh, approvals of experiences uh, for bigger purposes that uh, we don't even really need to focus on in the 3D life that we're currently living. And that is right. Okay. So are we able to send out profound healing to all who still have trauma that can be released? Yes, we also send profound healing and give them the people coming into their life to help them with this. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like Alexander to know about these approval experiences? Uh, he, that's just a confirmation for him as well. Nice. Yeah. That's all he needs to know for now. Great. He will respect that. I know he will. So thank you so much. And in terms of being, um, he wants to know a little bit more about himself in terms of hybrid. Um, is he a hybrid? And what can you tell him about that? His physical body on this earth is, I wouldn't call it, a hybrid is such a, it has just always been upgraded and because of his, his non-physical connections and energy, 
uh, he he kind of thinks there might be a hybrid connection, but it's not. It's it's it goes further than that. It goes deeper and higher and as you would say, more com convoluted than that. Uh, just because of the collective that is involved with him in this lifetime, which is just an experience of us anyway. And it's just more advanced or higher, more experienced than someone that would be in a hybrid situation or most situations. Intriguing. So for your self, uh, subconscious, what uh, dimension do you reside at mostly? We We would say that for your understanding and comprehension that it is not really a specific dimension because we can be anywhere, anytime in all dimensions and see everything. So we don't as such reside in one specific dimension. Fascinating. Thank you so much. Um, so intriguing. I love it. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, is there anything that you want to tell Alexander to be able to understand the hybrid situation um, just for his curiosity? Some, some people are brought on board for hybridization programs to create colonies and other planets and dimensions and to spread seeds and also experimental scientific reasons um, and also contracts for other souls. Alexander does have hybrid children and other planets and um, galaxies and that was a, the purpose for those cells to live that experience and that type of body and as we're all part of creating these things for others. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Out of curiosity, um, did you need to implant Alexander to know his location? How do you track his whereabouts when you needed to collect him for his approvals? No, we never need any technology. Everything is done non-physically for energy. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Is there other collectives that do need implants to be able to find them and locate them? Yes, some of them on the uh, we don't like to call it uh, a lower dimension or anything, but some that are not highly physically evolved will use technology to track others and some are living are higher beings but they are in a physical body or a semi-physical body they may use technology as well fantastic thank you um we were really curious about a client that Alexander had recently, and she was talking about some blue goop. We want to know all about this, please. Hmm. Yes, well, this client is actually a hybrid. 
and she has been brought to Alexander to help with her lifetime and to give her support and this blue goop that she speaks of is something that some races come into earth they go in there and it's like a it's like an app like a if you guys would relate to this as going into a lab when you go through one door and it shuts and there's another door closed and you get washed down before you come in and decontaminated but this blue goop is actually the opposite it's like a protection for coming to this earth from the microbes and bugs and chemicals and all the gunk that's here and it also gives them upgrades and knowledge downloads of everything they need to know about this planet and what's going on and what is about to happen as far as they can understand. Fantastic. And so uh, what was she then seeing as she was seeing these beings um, going into this blue goop? Uh, what is the purpose of her knowing this information? Um, because she is connected with this race and they are guiding her and they've always been around her. Um, and she discussed some events with Alexander and things that have happened and we're just giving her pieces of the puzzle. Fantastic. Um, the seemed that there was um, action happening. Um, we are assuming it could be regarding the shift. Is there anything else you want us to know about it? Um, action happening to do with what, sorry, the shift? Mm -hmm. um, so she was seeing uh, beings being prepared through this blue goop. Um, what else would you like us to know? Because she was being given downloads about action happening now and, and things moving. Right, yes. Well, she has been receiving information about the shift and she at the time she didn't know what it was about so we have been showing her snippets of what's going on and a part of that is to help you and your group with the knowledge about the shift as well and add, add to that. And these beings are here as support for everyone. And they're helping raise the energy and helping everyone do their inner work. They are preparing the planet for the shift. Fascinating, thank you so much. Was that client part of what we consider the first wave of volunteers? Yes, she is a first wave. Fantastic. Well, we send her love and appreciation for all that she's done for humanity. Yes, we send her love. Thank you so much. What else would you like us to know today that is of significance?
we say don't get too caught up with material life and the drama of things. Help others. Have time for your inner work. And by inner work, we don't mean work on your problems and stuff. We mean raise your frequency. We mean help raise your vibration so that you affect others. Like when someone smiles at another, then they smile and then they'll smile at someone else and the smile spreads contagiously through everyone, creating love and joy through the planet. And this is what you do with your energy on a non-physical level. And when you send that energy, smile to others, and that love energy, it creates a ripple throughout all of the world and out through the galaxy. And this is what is so important to do to help others. You know, everyone has their inner work and their days where things aren't so good or they're off their game. And as Dolores says, there will always, you will never get it done. There's always so much to be done. And like your inner work, there is always going to be something else to work on and another lesson to learn and another thing to work on. You don't have to get all of this done before the shift. What you have to do is keep your energy stable, keep your vibration stable, and send out love to yourself and others. Beautiful. Sending out an energetic smile to everyone listening right now, and I'm sending energetic smiles to everyone else in the world as we want to just love everyone and let them feel it. So I love this. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much.